Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Hari Swaminathan. Today, we're going to talk about the proprietary options uh, systems. You can see the title slide here. All of these systems gives options traders an edge on every trade. The, it's very important that we have an edge on every trade. There's a very big, uh, very important reason for that. And so the system that we're going to talk about today is something that will give you an edge. You know, no system can be 100% perfect. However, we're talking about methods. How do you approach a certain trades, certain strategies, especially with options? As we know, in the options market, we are dealing with the market maker. So this is very different from the stock market. We'll cover that. And this is the reason that we need an edge. Whenever you place trades, you want to make sure that you have some kind of an edge in the trade. If you just place a trade arbitrarily, it doesn't matter if it's a calendar or an iron condor or a debit spread or a credit spread. If you simply place a trade and then don't think about how you can get an edge from that trade, most likely or at least statistically over 10 trades, you'll find yourself losing more more times than winning. So, uh, you know, that's what we're going to talk about. We, You know, this edge is very important. And how do we get this edge? All right, so let's get right into it. My name is uh, Hari Swaminathan. I'm the founder of uh, OptionTiger.com. Uh, I've been an options trader for about eight, nine years now, and I have a bachelor's degree in engineering from India, and I have an MBA from Columbia Business School in New York. Uh, I mentioned I have about eight, nine years of options trading experience, and anybody that has gone through options will find the first couple of years fairly challenging, fairly frustrating. And it, it was no different with me. Many things I've learned are by making mistakes. Many things I've learned by trying to really get deep into the market structure itself, which reveals a lot of things about options. And so a lot of this, it's all coming from personal experience. And when you say personal experience, when you learn by mistakes, it goes without saying that you learn by losing money. And so, you know, that's very, it's very critical to not lose too much money when you're learning, when you're in the learning curve. And unfortunately, you are, we are going to lose money in the beginning. We are, but, but, but the trick is to keep those losses as low as possible because you want to learn the game. And options trading is a game. It is a game of skill. It is a game of skill that is no different from chess. It is a game of skill, much higher level of skill is required than poker. Poker is also a game of skill. However, it has an element of chance to it also. Whereas the options are, are, are entirely a game of skill. So it is no different from chess. So we'll get into some of this also. So let's get started. And in general, let's talk about the options market. Now, many of you may have quite a bit of experience in the options market. And so some of the stuff you may already be aware of. Maybe you have not realized a couple of things, even if you're experienced traders. And if you're a beginner or fairly new, new to options uh, trading, then this is very important information for you. You know, when you look at the options market, there is one very significant difference between the options market and the stock market. In the stock market, most of the time, 90%, 95% of the time, you're dealing uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer network. So meaning you have stock trading platforms, whether it's you know, E-Trade or Charles Schwab or whoever it might be. If you put in a buy order, the broker tries to match your buy order with a sell order from another customer, another trader. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer system. Whereas in the options market, that is not the case. In the options market, we always, always deal with the market maker. So every one of our trades is not against another trader. It is against a market maker. So this makes the options market no different from a casino. So when we walk into a casino, we play against the house. There are very few games where you play against each other. I think poker may be one of them, but most of the games in a casino like blackjack or roulette or craps or whatever it might be, most games are designed where you play against the casino. So the casino 
is legally allowed to have an edge and you know that's not some earth shattering news we knew, we know that we know that the casino operators have an edge because if they don't have an edge why would they be in that business why would they spend so much money creating this uh, fantasy land and having all these entertainment options and all of that if they did not have an edge uh, so the fact is they have an edge and it's no different with the market maker the market maker is a market maker in the options market for a reason and that reason is obviously because the regulators have allowed them to have a, you know some kind of an edge but obviously the edge has to be within reason otherwise uh, the, the regulators won't allow it and and the same goes for a casino as well however they are allowed to have an edge and so in the options market the market makers have two ways of having that edge uh, one is we, we know very clearly they set bid ask prices so whenever we make a trade we will face slippage on the bid ask spread the second way they have an edge is they have considerable flexibility in setting option prices you know the way they calculate volatility uh, the way they set option prices they have considerable flexibility and then you know they obviously the market will have a supply demand uh, dynamic and then it will go from there however they do have considerable flexibility in setting option prices by these two methods the market makers have a statistical edge in the long run okay so in the long run we are talking hundreds thousands you know tens of thousands of trades the market makers are there you know they are there every day and they have deep pockets so even if they have bad days you know they can come back and uh, and make that up no different from a casino when we go to a casino we can have a great day sometimes yeah i mean you know you might win a lot of money however what you really have to look at is the long run statistical edge and that unfortunately is on the other side whether uh, whether we are talking about casino operators or the options market market makers the statistical edge is on the other side and that's why whenever we take trades we think we are making good trades and so by definition that means that the market maker is taking a crappy trade so but they still take crappy trades all day and they still win you can know if you uh, if anybody's following all these big wall street uh, banks and uh, trading companies trading profits are just skyrocketing for all of these companies and and so you know they all have proprietary trading desks which then creates markets for all of these uh, products all of these stocks and trading has become a very profitable venture for all of these companies so net net bottom line is we traders face a problem of consistency and if you've traded options for any length of time you know that this is true when we say consistency meaning we can have two great trades three great trades a day four great trades or you know over a period of a week we'll have five or six or seven great trades but one trade will come and it'll it'll hit you and when you, and when it hits you you realize that you give up a lot of the profit if not all of the profit that you made on the previous trades and that's the problem there's a couple of reasons for this and all of this is coming from my personal experience my personal studying of what is happening in the options market what are the mistakes we make and 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 believe me we make a lot of mistakes we take off trades at the wrong time we adjust at the wrong time or we make the wrong kind of adjustment then we have transaction costs that that work against us so there's a lot of things that are going against us traders when we enter the markets and all of this over the long run over a period of a few months or a year or two it creates a problem of consistency and you know we are constantly fishing also you know today we try some trades tomorrow we try different adjustments so we are what you know what i call in constantly in a fishing mode and so all of this actually works in the favor of the market maker the market makers are never fishing they know exactly they don't even think they 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 are pretty much acting like robots when an order comes in because you know they look at the greeks they look at their risk numbers and and they only go with that so you know they are actually acting pretty robotically and that's really the way to win in the markets we traders need to act just like the market maker you know so we have a method you follow a method and that is what will put the edge on our side they say in a casino the casino has maybe a, a 52 48 edge maybe 53 47 
in the options market, if you look at all of these factors, I think, oh, you know, although it's not some scientific study or anything, but I think the options market to have the market makers have a much larger edge than than even the casino operators. Now, the only difference is uh, we know how well the casinos do because their assets is very visible to us. And in the case of market makers, we really can't see how much money they're making, but they are making money. All of these, like I said, these uh, Wall Street uh, companies are all every quarter they are producing 100 million, 200 million, 300 million or more than that in, in trading profits. I'm only talking about proprietary trading. So, you know, there's a lot of money they're making, which we can't see. It's, it's, it's behind a firewall. We cannot see it, but they are making a lot of money. So bottom line, we traders need to find a way to be consistent with our trades. And so the only way we can put consistency on our side is we have to have an edge on our trades and that's what the MAC systems are all about. In the case of a calendar or a diagonal, or we're going to also include double calendars and double diagonals as well into this product. Uh, there is a certain way to get a significant edge. And if you've ever seen a calendar or a diagonal, you have these tent poles and the profit is maximized at those tent poles. Now, granted, the probability of something expiring exactly at that tent pole is uh, very low. However, uh, the if it happens just once or twice out of five trades, uh, or at least close to the tent pole, then your reward to risk ratio come, becomes about five is to one. Even it can become even up to five is to one. And so, there's a way we can construct these calendars and diagonals to to be able to come close to achieving that. And so one trade, one winning trade, as you can see, may make up for two or three losing trades. And then the reward also is much, much higher. So the Calendar Max exploits these tactics and creates an edge for every calendar trade, every diagonal trade, and eventually it might be converted into or adjusted into a double calendar or a double diagonal. This is a very powerful strategy. It's a very underrated strategy. And I think it's one of the best uh, strategies we can use in a low volatility environment and that's because uh, it's a vega positive uh, trade and it's also a theta negative trade so you have time decay and you have vega positive so that is a very unique feature of calendars and diagonals and there's a specific way we can exploit that thanks